I love teaching blacksmithing and sharing with people, especially the beginners. Why? Um, What's the best part? The best part, you're a teacher too. I bet you, you could share this, uh, this favorite moment with me. Um, People struggle, you know, you show them you show them the techniques, you show them the safety, you show them how to find the right hammer for them. No, you don't want the giant hammer. Pick one that's smaller because you need finesse. Don't wear yourself out in the first 10 minutes. And you gotta aim, right? Right. You can't aim with that big thing. So, um, and you know, I have I have a 2.5 pound hammer and I tell, I let everybody see how heavy it feels and it's the perfect weight for me. I've been using this hammer since 1999 because it says that on the hammer and they go, what? Um, so they struggle. They have to figure out how their body moves with the anvil and the metal and things oh, like that. Oh, the patting, the head rubbing, the belly, because they gotta remember to. Oh turn. yeah, and th those are those are things to get used to. So that's why for my first class and why I ask the other teachers that teach here, just do nails the first day. Just get them to do nails the first day. It's all the same things over and over and over again. So then the next day you can do the next thing because it's the same things but a little bit different. And then this is how you go through the lesson so that they can get a little bit of muscle memory. So usually by, some people get it by the second class, but some people get it by the fourth class is what I've noticed. If people already have pretty good hand-eye coordination in the second class, they, they, they get that yeah. moment. And then the fourth class, everybody is usually on that, oh, I did it! And that's my favorite part, where they're like, wow, look, I did the thing that you taught me how to do! Yes. And they're happy, and it's wonderful, and they've come in, and maybe they thought they couldn't do blacksmithing for the life of them, but they wanted to take a chance at it because it looks cool, and then they walk out of there going, I totally did this thing that I didn't think I could do. Yeah. And I really try to bring to my class the aspect of doing the thing, but doing this thing also can be translated all right, that was hard, that was difficult. How can you put that into a different part of your life? Right. Also. Yeah. And no, this isn't smash em up metal time. We're not getting our aggressions out there. We're learning finesse and technique and how to zen ourselves into making the thing. Because you have to let go. Of, I, uh, oftentimes I've told my students, that perfectionist that you have in your pocket right now? Oh yeah. We're gonna, I want you to take that perfectionist and go put it back in the car and yeah, <laughs> lock the door. Her. Because we're not, we don't have that perfectionist in the class here. We wanna have fun and be safe. Yeah. Those are, those are my main priorities. And if you're learning stuff and you're making things, then you're doing good. Okay, so here's a question that I always like to ask. Um, when, when you're forging, how do you convince your really ambitious students to aim and that a lighter hammer will actually hit harder? Well, I don't use those words. Um, if I see someone who's having difficulty hitting the metal, um, we probably are using a too heavy of a hammer or one that's not comfortable to use. So I approach it, I might say, so how are you feeling using that style hammer? Sure. It seems like it might be a little heavy for you or it seems like maybe the shape is uncomfortable. Um, would you mind if I suggest and then I will pick one out, and uh, or three, and say, yeah. here's here's some three uh, different ones that I think might be good for you because this on this one, this on this one, and this on this one. So try them out, see how you feel. You leave them all there. With oh, them. of course. Always, it's crucial. Got to mm -hmm. do it. Because people don't know, and that's yeah. okay not yeah. to know. Like I don't know what I want when I'm going into the computer store to buy a new computer. Yeah. Because I look at them, I go. Ah. Well, and sometimes the students feel like they're they're being greedy by having like five hammers. They don't know they have license to just try them till they find one yeah. that works. Yeah, and I try to really communicate that to folks. Um, and I will let people struggle for a while because if you just jump in and correct somebody right away, they don't have the opportunity to heal the incorrect way. Right. If they if they're doing something incorrectly for long enough that makes you uncomfortable as the teacher, you're like, I have to go say something now. <laughs> um, yeah. And it doesn't always work with people, you know, they, a lot of folks just want to do it their way and that's fine. That's okay. Do it, do it your way and I will step back and you can learn what you need to learn. That's fine. I don't want to overstep. Um, yeah, but I do sometimes offer to 
I'll notice the way the way someone holds the hammer has been in the wrong, so I offer to, to have them just stand there and hold the piece of metal and hold the hammer and hold it how they're, they've been holding it, and then I'll take the, whether it's a ball peen or a cross peen, whatever's not the flat side, and I'll tilt it a little bit while it's in their hand so they can feel all these different parts of the hammer face that are touching the metal, and that sure. this angle right here is going to get you that point that you want. And then a lot of times that's all somebody needs because they're not quite understanding yeah. that little tiny thing. Because hammering is a very nuanced to a blacksmith. There's like a million ways to hit a surface. Oh yeah, that whole face of your, your hammer, you, you want to use every part of it to do something different. Yeah, and you're pushing in all these different angles, but yeah. um, for the beginner, they think it's just sort of Smash. straight up and down. That's how it works. And uh, our arms don't swing that way anyway. Yeah. So it yeah. makes it even funnier. Yeah. Yeah, and it's, uh, you know, it's something that I've noticed over the years. I've seen, okay, well, I'm teaching this thing, and people keep making the same mistakes, so what am I not saying with my teaching that I need to change? And there's been a few things that I've noticed, and it's doing that. That's one of them is, is holding the hammer face and putting it in the right angle for a sure. person, and that's been very helpful. Um, and I used to, you know, maybe touch someone's elbow to raise or lower the, the metal that they're holding. And people don't really like that anymore. It's a thing that you have to ask no, yeah, if yeah. you can do Personal that. Personal bubble. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm learning that, and that's a, it's a really wonderful thing to learn because I also have a personal bubble. Mm -hmm. um, but one of the other things that if I see someone really struggling, that and I, and I know that they don't, you know, they have a pretty tight personal bubble, what I like to do is I, I'll say, let me, can I pretend to be you? And I'll take their hammer and their piece of metal and stand it before it and I'll say, so I've noticed you were doing something like this and it, I think you'll have an easier time if you do it like this. Right. And then they can see. So you're pantomiming the yeah, motion. Yeah. So when I do that, I usually try to make it a little more exaggerated so it's yeah. clear what we're, you know, what's missing in the detail. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because it is just slight things that make a difference. Show them the difference of this versus that. Yeah. It doesn't always work, but you know. Uh, so